Do you work with serverless and would love to be able to debug your code using the inbuilt VS Code debugger? Well, in this video, that is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. We're going to be adding some configuration to our VS Code, which will allow us to use serverless offline to debug our Lambda functions and our APIs in real time. Of course, if you learn something new in this video, make sure to smash that like button as it really helps suggest this video to more developers just like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe down there and turn on the bell notification so you get notified next time I upload a video on serverless. So now let's jump into the code and see how we can get all of this set up. So now we're in the code, we're looking inside a serverless project where I have already installed serverless offline. And because this project uses Dynamo, we've installed serverless DynamoDB local and set those up. If you've not set either of these two up before, then I'm going to link a video up in the top as well as in the description to help you set those up. Now that we've got those set up, we can set up our debugging. So to start, what we need to do is go up to our debugging in the top left. And what we need to do is we need to create a debugging launch file to tell VS Code how we want to start the debugger. So what we need to do is click on create a launch JSON file. And we're going to be choosing node. And there we have it, we have created a template for our launch.json. Whilst this is good, we need to change a couple of things so that it works for our situation using serverless. So the type and the request are both correct, node and launch. We're going to change the name slightly to launch serverless offline. And you can change that to whatever you want, want, but it's just going to change what the title is up here. What we're going to do is we're going to delete the skip files and just look at program. So at the moment, it's saying that we're going to be looking at the webpack config, but we're going to be deleting that and changing that to run our serverless file. So we have to run the program of serverless, which is at node underscore modules forward slash serverless slash bin slash serverless and that is pointing at your local serverless package which you've installed using npm as well as that we want to pass some arguments to this so if you were doing it in a terminal you'd write something like serverless offline start pass in a port so we need to pass those arguments through and we select args which is an array. The first parameter is going to be offline and then start, which is going to start serverless offline. We then also want to define the port that we are opening up. So it's dash dash HTTP port. And we're going to go with port 4000 for this just to make it a little bit different to the default 3000. And then the last thing we want to do is because we may be spending a little bit longer debugging this, we don't want to hit the timeout that you get with a normal serverless API gateway endpoint. So we're going to dash dash no timeout. 
So that is the arguments that we need to pass. So we've got some extra things that we need to add in. So we're going to add in a protocol. And this is going to be inspector. And this is just allow it, this is just one of the different ways of re running your debugger. We're also then going to have a runtime executable. And this is also going to be node, just specifying that so that we know we're going to be running a node environment. And the last thing that we need to do is add env. So this is an object containing all of the environment variables that we want to add to this workspace. Because we won't have the default environment variables from serverless, we need to add them in here. So if we go into our serverless YAML and have a look for our environment variables, we can see we have one of table name. So we're going to add that in here. And that points to, in our case, self.custom.table name, which here is player points. So we just need to paste that in. So that is all you need if you're using a Mac. And then on Windows, if you are using a Windows machine, you need to say Windows. And this is just providing some extra config for the path and directories if you're using a Windows machine, as they use a slightly different format, what you can do is copy this program line, paste that in, and then change all of the forward slashes to a double backslash. This is because this is how Windows decides to set up its file paths. If we now save this file, we can go into the top of our debugger and we can see it says launch serverless offline. And if we hit the play button, we can see that in our debug console, it has started serverless offline. I'll make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So because I've used DynamoDB, it has created a DynamoDB table of player points. And then serverless offline has started all of our endpoints. What we can now do is start doing some cool debugging. So if we go into our files, into lambdas and endpoints, I'm going to start with get user. So in here, we want to put a breakpoint about, let's say, here. So now we've added the breakpoint. If we head over into a Postman instance, and this is the URL that we are hitting. So we're going to be getting user 7893, and we hit send. You can see that this request is hanging, and that's because inside our code, it has stopped at this breakpoint. If we go into our debugger, we can actually minimize these few things and we can see all of the variables declared here. So we have the event and we have all of the data inside the event. And we also have the ID. That ID has been pulled off there. And if we needed to do some more debugging, we'd know what state all the local variables are in. To finish this request off, you hit the play button, which will carry on running, so it will return our response. As you can see, inside our Postman instance, we continued and got the response back. This is really cool, but now we're going to step it up one step further, and we're going to look at doing it inside a Lambda and an endpoint that uses Dynamo. So if we go into our files, go into create player score, we're going to add a breakpoint here. So this is just before we write it into Dynamo. And another one here, so just before we are sending a response. So if we now go back into Postman, 
go into a post request to create player score. I've given this user a user ID of 12235 and I've given the user some data in the body with a type of JSON. So this is the user that I'm posting up. And if I now hit send, we'll see that is, the request is hanging again. If we go into our code, we can see that it is paused at this breakpoint. So inside here, we can see that there is an ID of 12235. We have a user, which is an object with the name, age, job, and ID, just as we'd expect. If we now hit play, it will do that Dynamo request and pause our next breakpoint. So now we can go into res and see that our response from our Dynamo write is also the same set of data that we are writing, which is exactly what you'd expect. And hit play and it will finish off the request. So if we scroll down in here, we can see that the user that was returned is the user we would expect. And finally, the last thing we can do is do a get on that user. So I've set up a get request. So all we need to do is go into get player score and decide where we want to put some breakpoints. I'm going to put a breakpoint just about here. So we can see what the user is that is returned from Dynamo. What I'm also going to do is go into the dynamo.js file and I'm going to put another breakpoint here. So just before we actually do the request to the document client. If I now go and hit play, this is going to make our request and in a second it will jump us over to here. So although we're not directly calling this dynamo.js file from our endpoint, because our get player score calls this, it has hit this breakpoint. If we go into our config, we can see the parameters that are being passed into this document client. We can see that we have a key of ID where it's 12235 and the table name of player points. This is exactly what we'd expect. And if there was some issues in this code here, or the table name or the ID hadn't been passed through correctly, you'd be able to see all of that inside this debugger. If we now hit play, it will jump through, finish this Dynamo request, and get down to this point where we can now see the result of that user request is the Tom user that we just created a second ago. So now that's all done and we've tested and debugged all of our code, we can stop the debugger. So that is how you will use debugging if you're writing common JS, such as using requires. If you're using imports and using Webpack, then we need to do something slightly different. What I'm gonna do is go into a similar repo that I've set up in exactly the same way. But in this one, if we go into a create player score, we're using the import syntax, which is ES6, and we're using Webpack to, compi to compile this down. If we go into our launch serverless and start up our debugger, we can test out the same functions, but there's a slight change to how we use the debugger. So now that has all started, if I go into my file, find my create player score and put a breakpoint here, I can then go into my request and change to this request again. But as you can see, this has sent the response through straight away without hitting that breakpoint. 
That's because when you're using Webpack and serverless, you're not actually running the original file. You're running the Webpack file. So if we go into web.webpack and find the create player score.js file, we can see that in here, we have a function that looks very similar, but not exactly the same. There's a lot of stuff at the top of the file, which is the imported code from other files, but we want to still look at this handler. If we now put a breakpoint on here and go back into our request and hit send, what this will do is it will actually break when we're using the webpack compiled files. This is a little bit of an annoyance and something you have to definitely get used to. And if I do find a res resolution for this, I will add a link in the comments below and in the description for how we can solve this so that we use our raw files. So in this video, we've looked at how we can add a little bit of configuration to our serverless project and VS code, which will allow us to, in real time, debug using the inbuilt VS code debugger. We even saw it working with serverless offline with DynamoDB, which is a really cool thing to be able to debug locally on your own machine. We then looked into how it's slightly different if we use Webpack. So that's gonna cover use cases such as using modern like ES6 plus syntax and webpacking it down, or it could be simply using TypeScript and having to compile that down before we can run it. So thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you have liked it, make sure to smash that like button as it helps the channel get shown to more developers like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, turn on the bell notification once you're subscribed down here so that you get notified next time I upload a new YouTube video. Thank you and I'll see you in that video.